Hi, Rap Scene with the Metal Market Wrap-Up, your weekend edition. And this is for Saturday, the 29th of October, 2022. <clears throat> I am still out of town, so this format doesn't include me in it. Uh, I will be returning midweek to Chicago, latter part of the week. And then I'm there for the, uh, the season, if you will, with you. So we'll see what goes on. But I want you to take notice. You, you, you had an interesting dichotomy of events. The stock market indices all to the positive. Basically, everything else, with the exception of what? The dollar and the British pound in the red. You had beans up a little bit at the end there. And I, by the way, move to the jam beans from the no beans for those of you that follow that. Wow. So this is the week where we're going to get more reports. We're going to get the Fed. <coughs> we're going to get jobs data. We're going to get some CPI numbers then coming up after through all this. And we will see if the market is right and anticipating that we have seen a turn. If you looked at this week's past PCE index, I didn't see that. I see that one of their favorite core indexes is still running red hot. So I don't know what people are seeing in these numbers, but they're seeing something. And the market wants to anticipate again that the, uh, the market is going to see the ped pit, the pivot and that the 75 basis point hike that the, the market is set up for November 2nd will be it. And then after that, the market is going to go to 50 basis point hikes down to 25, peaking out at 4.75 to 5%. Okay, it, it's called reading the tea leaves. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. When I take a look at the gold chart, you were down 1.37% for the month. Month's not over, obviously, or is it? Well, for all practical purposes, the 29th, it's over. So this is what you're looking like. Not a very good month for things. When we take a look at how gold is trading right now on um, everything else through here, it is still working to the downside. So, you know. And by the way, I realize Monday is the last trading day of the month, but for the pur all purposes, you'd have to rally very hard to not be in the uh, in the red there. On a weekly chart, you finished off losing again, and the headwind of inflation is just ultra clear here. Look at how this market just keeps pointing lower. As we come down, we can see that the market has fought a battle that it started to lose last week. It again lost it the week before when the market right here as you can see, stayed under the 200 week, and it's again under it. Have we embedded in the market? Embedded means that you take the slow stochastic, and if you look on the left where it says SSTO, you get weeks where the numbers are both under 20. Well, let me come back here. They certainly were not here, and under this week, only one of them is under that. So we have an oversold market that in theory should find support, as I see it, at 16.10.60, the lower band. Finding support is, does not mean you're bullish. It means an area that the pros, in my opinion, will cover short positions. But the market is still bearish, but under selling pressure, that baits when you get both numbers not embedding and they're, they're flirting at the 20 level. When I come to the weekly chart on the swing line, lower highs, lower lows, bearish. When I look at where the market might rally up to if it gets a bounce, the 200 and the 18 week, and this number is going to fall. If you'll take a look at it, the values here it was 1733.90, then 1723.60, see it in red. And then this week it was down to 17, uh, what is that? 17.13. So it's falling about $10 at a time. So you're going to see that number get closer to the 1700 level, is my point, which is close to. The 1687.90 of the 200 week. They're going to fight each other for the resistance in the market. We do have a pause though. Now, what do I mean by that? You have lower highs and higher lows. The low right here was 1613. This low is 162280. If you take out this low, you then resume the break in the market back to bearishness. But as I just showed you, you got to be careful because your Bollinger Band comes in, and that's going to come in at 16.10.60 or thereabouts. So I don't look for this market to have an easy time pushing itself a lot lower. That is probably the, the most friendly statement I can make about it. And as you can see, do we have embedded readings here? Well, we take a look, not there. 
not there, and not there. There's really nothing that you can say about it other than the market is getting into a territory where you might not attract new selling down at Bollinger Bands. In the gold-silver ratio for the week, and this is important, silver is gaining on gold. Each time it falls back, that's it. The line in the sand is what I call the 18-week average. When you're under that, it means that silver is stronger than gold. Over it, it's the opposite. Why? Well, the higher these numbers go, the more ounces of silver in perfect worlds you need to get one ounce of gold versus this as you fall down. And as we look at the silver market, you have a higher high, lower low scenario fighting at the 18-week average of closes. In other words, just pretty neutral chart here. In the copper market, the period of time at the London Metal Exchange for comments as to whether or not as an exchange they should bar doing business with Russia has ended as of Friday. So now the big question is what does the exchange intend on doing? One of the ways that the, the exchange was looking is who was buying what. And Russia, Russian copper, was strongly bought and taken out of l and &E warehouses, the London Metal Exchange warehouses, by China. We're talking massive amounts of it. So China is saying, hey, we still want to buy it. There are traders at the l and &E that are concerned about aluminum prices, that if they don't get some of the Russian uh, material, that aluminum will suffer in the UK and, and the European Union and other spots. So it is a tricky situation. We'll see how it all plays out. But in looking at the copper market, this is a bearish chart. Lower highs, lower lows. In addition, China has gone back to a lockdown policy in several cities now. So some big industrial centers, Wuhan included in, in what I just said, by the way, they have gone back to lockdown. So what President Xi is proving is that his policy is staying as it was concerning how they're going to deal with COVID. And of course, the COVID season is upon people again, problems for the market. So if you can get back under the 200-week average, you do open the door for 325, 30. Now, the last break low in this market was right here. And that number was 330. Then we made a higher low. So you got higher lows, lower highs. You're in a pause here waiting to see what the next event's going to be. In the platinum, this is where resistance should show. Momentum is up, but you're up to the upper Bollinger Band and fighting now, as you have for the past two weeks, between the upper Bollinger Band and the 200-day average of closes, this, uh, this number right through here. I'd be watching that, but I certainly wouldn't buy into it. The dollar has been slipping away, as you can see. And as the dollar slips, now the big question is what happens as it approaches the 18-day average. Uh, the market has lost favor with the dollar because, in part, the market is pivoting, as you saw in the stock market. It's, for whatever reason, decided that, hey, interest rates were coming to the end of the, the, the rate hikes. The market thinks that as we get up with the 75 basis point hike, gets us close enough where the market has to say, okay, for the U.S. dollar, those rate hikes are going to come to an end sooner rather than later. You get all out bearish if you close under 109.03. So it's an interesting time in that market. How do you put it together? Well, this is going to be an interesting week. It is a week that uh, by midweek we'll have more ideas, maybe some questions, but certainly more ideas on when the Fed will, in fact, be talking of uh, ending its rate hike. It could get pushed back. Why? What if the Fed, the Fed Chair Powell, says, no, they have not seen enough evidence yet to stop? Well, the people that are then betting for a 50 basis point hike in December it's only October still, but they're already betting on their December hikes. We'll have to recalibrate and say, well, maybe the 75 is back on. And of course, it won't matter come the meeting because then you're going to get the jobs data and then you're going to get the CPI reports. And those are going to determine what actually is going to happen. You get a lot of information. Then we'll get another set of information at the beginning of December, and that'll tell us where we're at. Complicated to a degree, but if you're playing with the Bollinger Bands and you're understanding the momentum that's tied with them and you're understanding what a swing line does, away you go. To that vein, you might want to consider taking my Enhanced Bollinger Band course to learn how to do this yourself. Welcome. 
I'm Ira Epstein and I'm here to talk about my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Now many of you have taken my regular charting course and if not you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time and on a chart it will offer on the top part resistance on the bottom support and the ideas the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches on to that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software, so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.